Welcome to the Mental Advantage Podcast. Whether you're an athlete trying to perform at your best when it counts the most, a coach or business leader trying to get more out of your team, or someone looking for more personal growth, this is the place for you. This podcast is your map to guide you to the right mindset, systems, and strategies you need to become the best version of yourself. And now, here's John Cullen and Brandon Allen. Well, congratulations, man. I uh, I didn't take the time the other day to mention this when we had Dana Charbonneau on, but that was our 25th episode, which was pretty cool. Um <laughs> You know, and it's it's something that I think you and I and we joked about this. I remember back on the first show was, hey, you know what? If nobody even listens, then we'll still just do the same thing we've done for you know about thirty years now, which is just talk to each other for <laughs> for, for, for for a little bit of time or whatever, yeah. and then move on to the next thing and hit a bunch of different topics. So, um, you know, we've now done twenty five times for other people to hear something we've done probably uh, well over 2,500 times. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's crazy though. I mean, that's, um, it's interesting too, because I think like some, I think, you know, our numbers are starting to kind of go up and, and it's, it's something that we even talk about, you know, occasionally here on the show is just what, what's showing up every day and being consistent and, and all that kind of produces and, and, um, you know, it, it's it's starting to show in the downloads and the the questions that we're getting right. from listeners now and all that. So it's 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 really cool to to kind of see the evolution of it, and um, you know, certainly thank the listeners for um, being a part of it. Absolutely, and I think you're spot on where we talk about the idea of if you don't get results, focus. If you just really commit to that process, uh, and that's what we've done. I mean, we changed. We went from doing one a week to having you know the this show where it's just you and I talking here in between guests, um, and that's right, a, right. given us an opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the things that are on our mind. Uh, and and I think people are responding to that because, like you mentioned, the listeners um, are definitely going up, which is a good thing. And as we joked about on one of the last shows internationally, even to some degree, and probably even to a more of a degree than we have in the United States, I think in some pockets, but um, so who knows what that's all about. But uh, I, uh, I, I've gotten a lot of really good feedback on Dana Charbonneau and that, that particular episode the yeah. other night. Um, this, I think the idea of emotions and that emotional flexibility to really resonated with a lot of people because it's something that, as you pointed out, when you've gone through certain things in your life and you only identify, well, I only have these two or three things that as emotions that I That's can not, identify, right, right. you know, um, and then how how much that it changes whenever you start to really look at it and say, well, no, there is more than just those two or three and I can accept them and deal with them and how healthy that is. For sure. And, and, and it allows you to process it, right? Because if you, I mean, you can imagine your life if, if you only process something either through a black and white lens or, um, you know, rose colored glasses or, you know, whatever it is, if, if, if that's, if that's what you're limited to, then especially when you start talking about the, the mental flexibility or mental acuity and, and all the stuff that, that goes along with that on the, on the mental performance side, I mean, it, it's just a very limited path. You talk about process, like there's only one or two ways that you process anger or sadness or happiness. And um, there's so many other uh, emotions and depth there that, that, um, that, that if you can identify it, you can do something with. Now, those listeners that are listening to this and hearing me talk about emotional depth are probably laughing, going, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, fella. But, but yeah. I mean, that is, but that, that is true. I mean, what, what Dr. Um, Dana was talking about certainly resonates and, and something that I can, I can definitely attest to. Yeah, and the, I, the way that she... What really struck a chord with me was when she was talking about 
the, you know, how often as coaches or parents, we've just say, you know, suck it up or it'll be fine. You know, in parents that it, it, they want, they feel like they're doing good with this, right. They feel like it's when they say, Oh, it'll be okay. That, you know, let's just brush this away. Let's just kind of push this to the side that that's doing good because in the moment it may distract that child or it may, uh, you know, make that, that child forget about what's actively going on in their lives at that particular time. But the long-term effects of continuing to be told over and over, just push it away, just push it to the side. It's okay. It's, you know, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. You know, has it has an impact. It does. It does. Especially if it, you know, because you're, you're, you're kind of creating arrested development, whether it's a, Hey, everything's great. You're the best and get back out there or, um, Hey, don't worry about it. You know, suck it up buttercup. Right. And, and I think, and we touched on it a little bit. I think what gets lost there is mental toughness doesn't mean emotional stunted, right? Mental tough means, hey, things aren't going right. Let me let me kind of persevere and, and kind of do allow myself to overcome kind of the negative thoughts. That's mental toughness. It's not, hey, don't, you know, if if you're sad, if you're um, if you're having bouts of depression, if you're that, that's not, that's not being mentally tough, pushing through that. Right. Right. And certainly in those instances. And that's not mentally, weakness. and that's not mental weakness. If you have those things, you know, no I mean, doubt. I think that's no, something no that doubt. has to be addressed because I think anytime we put a label on one thing in, in our society, there's has to be a converse to that. Right. So if this is mentally tough to do this, then accepting it and dealing with it and uh, all of that is mental weakness in well, some regard. Yeah, yeah. And Dr. Charbonneau even touched on it, right, that that those aren't mutually exclusive things. Like both of these things can be true. You can be, you can be a mentally tough competitor and, a, and kind of a savage out on the field and, and still understand how certain things create feelings within you. Right. I mean, there's, yep. that's a difference. Um, I mean, look at, look at a David Goggins or somebody like that, who, um, you know, is extremely mentally tough. Um, but when you hear him talk, he's talking about pushing a limit. He's talking yep. about pushing through self-imposed um, barriers. He's not talking about, Hey, you know, don't, you know, be emotionally weak. He's not right. saying don't be emotionally vulnerable. He's saying, Hey, don't, don't let your mind shut you down when your body has so much more to give. And those, those are completely different yeah. um, things. Well, and everybody that we've talked to and, and this is what I love about this show is if you could go back and take all 25 episodes and start to pull little bits here and there, they would, there would be an inner, it would weave among, there would be something. Oh, there's that a common all thread. Of those, no, you know, there's a, absolutely a common thread. And, I think and one, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And one of those things is I think about this is, and it's kind of been there the whole time is, and we've talked about it in different terms, whether it's neutral thinking, whether it's acceptance and commitment therapy that we talked about with Bailey Nevels and, and Marcia Edwards, but it's, it's understanding that these thoughts, these emotions will happen. The mind is always going to be running. We cannot stop the mind from thinking, from mm-hmm. feeling all of those things or whatever but it's okay to accept them and deal with it and then get that. Now we push it aside, not to ignore it, but we push it aside to say, that's not going to help me stay focused on what I need to be focused on right in this moment. But, and, and that's a great point, but it's also part of what Dr. Barbano talked about last week, which is there's, there's almost this um, going through the hierarchy, right? And, and it's, it's, it's accepting, it's not pushing it aside. It's accepting that this is there, like you just said, and accepting that this is how I feel and, and that's okay. But now it's time to go. Right. Yep. And, and, yep. and it's not, it, it's not ignoring it. It's not, it's not 
saying, ah, to hell with it. Uh, it this does, it isn't here. No, it's saying, okay, how do I process it? How do I accept it? And how do I move on to be in, in spite in, of it? Right. And, and, yeah. and it's kind of like what, you know, you hear uh, people talk about courage, right? Courage isn't the absence of fear, right? It's, it's actually to the contrary of that. It's, it's the presence of fear and still having the mental toughness to persevere. Yep. Right? That's courageous. It, courageous isn't to act like, you know, uh, whatever it is. Yeah, that you don't have fear. Right. No, no, it's and, accepting it. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. And so hopefully everyone took as much from that. That was one of those guests um, that when we got done, I think both of us were like, hey, can't wait to get her back on oh, the sure. uh, on the show because there was, I mean, we've had a lot of guests like that, but I, I felt like there was so much more that we could have talked about with her. Um, yeah. I'll tell you something that's been, you know, me long enough to know every so often I will get something that just really irritates me. And I want to tell you, this, will, I know you well enough, this will irritate you too, but I heard a story not to shift gears from the emotional, just as I was talking about accepting your emotions. Well, here's accepting anger on my part, because this sure, is, sure. this was a little frustrating for me, but I heard this story the other day about there was a player. And, and if you have ever coached your own kids um, you will be able to, uh, you know, kind of this will this will touch a touch a nerve, so to speak, or you'll at least be able to appreciate this story. But there was a, a player um, and they had their their one of their parents was their coach and had a situation where, you know, you have another coach who used to coach some of the players, I guess, evidently on this particular team. I I don't know if it was a travel team or whatever the case would be, but so you had a player whose son or daughter was on the team that they, that, that of this sport. And then you had a, uh, I don't know if it was like a former coach, whatever the case would be. Okay. Like a previous coach. Previous coach. Perfect. Better way to say it because I was clearly struggling with this. Uh, but <laughs> so there was a previous coach was watching the game and okay. made started making some comments in the stands like, oh, you know, it, it makes sense that so-and-so is playing because, you know, uh, that, that person's, that player's parent is one of the coaches or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, it really struck a nerve with me, I think for a couple of reasons. One is we have talked about, this idea of mindset and the mental advantage. One of the things I hope has come across to people is you've got to be accountable. The only way that you will grow as a player, as a business person, whatever it is that you have going on in your life is to have a true, honest self-assessment of yourself, be accountable to what your strengths and your developmental areas still are. And sometimes it may be that those developmental areas are not allowing you to be out on the field or the court or whatever the case may be, but you got to be honest about that, but it doesn't help in your process or your progress uh, towards having that type of a mindset as an athlete. When you've got voices like this former coach Mm -hmm. who decides that it's not your performance that's dictating whether or not you are playing in that game, it has to be, that the only reason this player is out there playing is because of a parent uh, who happens to be coaching. And it drives me absolutely insane because I see this happen, Brandon, in, in, in two forms. I see it happen a lot with players where people will give the players an excuse for sure. um, not playing, you know. Uh, and I also see it happen with teams where lately there's this big thing going on with sports where you have um, a lot of the, you know, announcers, the sports center type, you know, talking heads that are like, oh, let's spend 20 minutes the next day talking about why the Tennessee Titans didn't beat the Kansas City Chiefs instead of why the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Tennessee Titans, right? Right. So instead of giving, but I think, you know, and this is a much deeper conversation for a much you know, a different time, but, but to me, that is, that is culturally part of our problem right now is that we are, 
whether you want to call it cancel culture or whatever it is, everybody wants to hop on the negative and they don't want to embrace the fact that in the instance that you just gave that Kansas city won. So how about the team that persevered? How about the team that maybe, uh, yes, while another team may maybe made some mistakes, the, the, the team that won had to capitalize on those. So yep. how about you focus on the things that are like that instead of piling on? And I, and I think that's what goes on a lot, John, is there's a lot of piling on right now. Now, here's the, here's the ironic thing about the instance that you gave the story, and it is infuriating. And, it, and, it, and as, a, as a coach, it bothers me on so many different levels, especially when I'm, when I'm coaching, you know, Knox. And, and I will tell you that more, there are more conversations where I, I just have to tell him and, and reassure him that, hey, man, look, I, I know being my son on a team that I coach is difficult. Yeah. Right? Um, one, I hold you to a higher standard, whether that's fair or not. You are held to a higher standard than the other players. Um, I try not to do that from a performance standpoint, but from an attitude, from a coachability, from you know all of the things that that are really more important than a result. But what I do find interesting in the story that you just told is how is it any different? for a previous coach to be commenting about a player that they coach and how it's just an opinion. Right. It, right. It, they they have a favorite. You're, you're yes, complaining exactly. about favoritism, except you are yep. doing the exact same thing that you Absolutely. are pretending that you care about. Yeah. And it's, you, it's, you have the bias that you're right. accusing the other coach of, ha- of using right. it, it, it and and that's what happens i find a lot of times is people project that and you you said it i mean look you know i coach my son and daughter both and i i will say that i've always said that the the most uh the hardest position on the field or the court to play is the coach's son or daughter Absolutely. because you number one and especially at that young age at a mm-hmm. y- young young age um, they're usually the person that when you have to bench somebody, you're going to bench because it's uh, you can deal with that parent sometimes at home that uh, that you have to you know answer to. Um, sure. But they usually do not that they would deserve it, but they usually do find themselves being that first person that you're going to sit down sure. just so that you don't have to deal with all the other things. And but when you get into higher levels of competition. Um, high school, college, things like that. I really want you all as parents and coaches, and I know it feels like, um, you know, these shows are just Brandon and I just lecturing the listeners on different things. And hopefully it's not taken as lecturing, but more as a awareness. Um, But you really are not helping that player Mm -hmm. when you are giving them excuses as to why they're not on the court or why they're not on the field. Yeah. You're, you're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely. It's such a detriment. It is such a detriment to that player long-term, not even, not even short-term. I mean, I I can tell you, you know, when I was coaching high school, I mean, I I remember like it was yesterday. I had a parent come Mm -hmm. talk to me after a game and, and I thought we, we at the time had, laid the ground rules that, Hey, by the time they're in high school, they, I'm not talking to you as no. a parent about playing time or anything like that. And, and, um, and a parent came and talked to me and I said, so let me ask you a question. I said, um, how many, how many practices do you attend? Um, do, do you, do you know, like what, what would your son or daughter say about this conversation right now. So, and, and, and that's what I do. I always pull, like, I always used to pull the the son or daughter in and I'd say, okay, so I'm, your mom, your dad approached me, 
So who who could you be playing instead of? Right. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go through the lineup, and you tell me. You get to make the lineup. So who are you pulling? Who who's coming out? Right. You go to practice. You know this. You know that. And I, I think, and we've talked. We we have touched on it a couple of times. I think the unfortunate thing, John, is that so many parents get wrapped around their kids instead of really, really looking at what sports should be uh, or any team activity, yeah. sport, band, whatever. It, 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 it's the opportunity to learn life lessons in a two hour span. Yeah. Right? It, it's to, to learn a life lesson 100 yards at a time or yep. nine innings or four, whatever it is. It's, it's learning those lessons and allowing them to develop. They don't need you as a parent. At some point in time, you have to step aside and let them develop. And yeah. um, making excuses for them yeah. is the absolute worst thing. And it's, it is the one thing that I, I can say consistently I, I did not allow my kids to do. No. Is, is say, well, well and, it's and, this, that, or the other. Yeah. And we've seen it. And I think uh, the reason this is so irritating is we've seen it on both ends of it as coaches in that sport mm-hmm. and watch and how that affects players, mm-hmm. but also as business leaders, these mm-hmm. same kids grow up and they're so difficult to manage or to lead in the business environment because every time they get overlooked for a position or not assigned a certain project, or not given a certain opportunity within that organization that you're working in. It's always drama. There's always like, Oh, I didn't get that because of this. I didn't get that because of this or whatever. And when we talk about E plus R equals O and that whole, your response, your responsibility is your ability to respond, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. And so if you're not doing that, um, consistently and you're not helping people to choose the right response, then I'm telling you right now, if you're giving those excuses to that player when they're 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, whenever it is, if you're giving them those excuses, that same person later on in life, when the, when real stuff happens, when real issues, the real life happens to them, their ability to respond is oh, not it's, going it's, to be there. It's garbage, and and yeah. they're they're not coachable. No. Um, they they um, they feel like it's an attack. Yeah, you know, every time something doesn't go their way, somehow or another, it's an attack on them, and it's not the case. Um, you know, I, I it's it's just a very um, at the at the end of the day, you're hurting you're hurting your son or daughter if if you continue to um, make excuses for them. Yeah. Tell work them with them all the time. Yep. Right. Work with them on, you know, it, it's, a, and it goes, we're starting to see this start to um, invade the school system mm-hmm. with teachers. And it's not my, my kid wouldn't have got a bad grade on that. It's got to be the teacher's fault. Like well, there's so yeah. many examples of this right now that we've got to take a stand at somewhere along the line and stop just making excuses for all of the people uh, and, and say to that, that child, Hey, you know what? It's, it really does suck that you made a C on that, that test that you, uh, just took in your history class or whatever. What are some things if you had a chance to do it differently that you would maybe do different? Like whatever, like you have to start having that. And we've talked about this, and you've heard all these sports psychologists and different clinicians and um, performance coaches on this show tell you, as a parent, as a you know young coach, whatever the case would be, you have a responsibility and, and an opportunity to really help that child, that young player self-assess and really start to debrief their days. And those are the types of things you should be doing, not being in the stands. As a coach, too, that's what I think probably irritated me more as somebody who spent over 25 years coaching is listening to another coach criticize a coach from the stands just mm-hmm. irritates me to no end, as you can tell. Um, so, well, I mean, sir, so, so, you know, 
not to harp on it, but you know, poor teachers now have no authority, right? Um, because because parents do not make sure that their children understand your teacher didn't give you anything. Yeah. You earned that yep. C. You, yep. you, you know, it, it yeah, it, it just it drives me crazy. And, and to your point on the on the coaching from the stands, look, it, you know, I, I've had a lot of people and I, and I say it all the time. An opinion is just like you know, um, right? The backside. Right? Yeah. Every, everybody's got yeah. one. They they most of them stink, and yeah. um, you just you just kind of you kind of move on. And and if you were that good at it, then you know. I know that there were during registration or signups or whatever that park and rec and, and, and places are always looking for good coaches. Right. So if you've got a passion for it, if you feel like you have um, that big of an opinion, certainly get, you know, get lace them up, get on out there. Um, You know, the community uh, would, would uh, love to have you. And you know that my uh, closing thought on that is just making sure that as parents, as coaches, whatever the case would be, you have an opportunity with that child to let them know, never give anybody that much power over you that their decision as whether you play or not, their decision as to whether you get that promotion or not. And as you grow older is you know, going to control everything about your life. Like that, that's the, that's the whole key is if you teach them early on uh, the idea, and we just talked about that a little bit, even as it is from an acceptance standpoint, but that this happened. It's so what now, what this happened, what are you going to do about it? Right. How are you going to change it in the future? Um, But I can tell you right now that the, the solution is never, Oh, I'm going to make an excuse for this, or I'm going to um, be the victim. Because trust me, as you pointed out, we've got plenty enough victims in society right now. We don't need any more. Um, no, no. So. But hey, this is this is actually a really good topic, though, especially with um, with our guests coming up, right? I mean, yeah, so we can dive a little deeper into. Yeah, we'll we'll dev- definitely uh, get into that. One of the the good things about um, this show has been as we've started to infiltrate, uh, I guess to some degree, wow. the circle. Uh, big word. Infiltrate. That, right. I mean, well, I mean, big word, but but uh, almost kind of nefarious. But okay, I'm down. Oh, what well, th- that was another one. You just like you tried to one up my uh, infiltrate with nefarious. No, no, no. Yeah, I see what we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> all right let me let me, me, let me go <laughs> through the dictionary real quick i think my mic's cutting off let me just, don't worry about this keyboard tapping um but no i uh i i think the the cool thing about it though has been like aaron goodson who the listeners will remember from a few weeks ago um uh, from mississippi state this is a small circle of coaches of Absolutely. clinicians that are in this and um, when you start to talk to a few of them, they usually always know two or three other ones or whatever. And it's, it's interesting. Aaron Goodson was kind enough to give us a name of a, uh, you know, introduced us to a Dr. Jay Stewart, who is a performance expert who works with like tactical athletes, some military folks and helping them reach and maintain high levels of performance under challenging circumstances, kind of like, Andy Reese was doing before, yeah. you know, he um, got involved with the Reds. The military. Yeah. Yeah. But Dr. Stewart's been, and I'll have to fight the temptation to call him Dr. J, but Dr. Stewart uh, has been a uh, doing that for, for over a decade. So he's going to be actually on our show later this week. Um, and that's definitely something that we want to get into that discussion with him. And also Brandon and I were talking before the show um, that, you know, there's this, there's also this kind of mindset shift with some people uh, where, you know, there's this, like, is it a fear of failure? Is it a fear of success? Like there's a whole mm-hmm. bunch of different things we can dive into with that because we were talking about, um, you know, sports like baseball. Actually, I even think that that whole dilemma between that performance hesitation, if you will, um, 
is, you know, when we said, is it a fear of failure? Is it a fear of success? Whatever the case may be, is also one of those that also kind of goes into the academic world because I hear lots of stories and I actually um, dealt with this some myself as a parent where a student will complete their homework assignment or they'll do like have all of the, 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 the work that they've done ready when they go to school and they don't turn it in. And you ask them like, why didn't you turn it in or whatever? And it's like, I don't know. I just didn't turn it in or whatever. Like they had it and they're sometimes in some situations get in trouble. And I can only imagine people listening to this on pod on, you know, with their car radio, whatever the case may be on a walk or run and nodding their heads with this, because I'm telling this is a big real issue with a lot of students who will have homework completed and just don't turn it in because again, I don't know if that's because it's a fear of failure or, or what, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll dive into that with Dr. J Stewart uh, this week as well. Very cool. So um, one last thing I did want to touch on, we have a about less than probably about five minutes or so here. Um, but I was telling Brandon that um, Tyler Pazik has done a really phenomenal job with his podcast. You all may remember Tyler from one of our earlier shows and uh, the author, uh, him, uh, along with another gentleman, Greg, um, or author of the book, uh, Ask More, Tell Less for Coaches. And um, Tyler has kind of changed up his format a little bit on his podcast where he's been doing these book reviews lately. And it got me thinking, you know, when Dr. Brett McCabe was on the show, there was some information that he had um, talked about in his book, The Mindset Manifesto, that I had prepared for the show that I wanted to ask him about and didn't get a chance to ask him about. But I did still want to make sure that I shared it with the listeners because um I, I love any of these lists and you see them on Instagram all the time. Now it's like the top five books uh, that help you be successful or the top three things you can do or whatever. Well, well, uh, Dr. McCabe had come up with five things, the best of the best do every day. And I'm not going to dive as deep into this as I had planned on doing, but that I, I do think it's really interesting. So I wanted to share it with the listeners because as he points out, you know, success is a process. You've heard us say this plenty of times. It's never an accident. Um, it's usually the intentional, it's usually the result of a, a lot of intentional action, right? So the five things that the best of the best do every day, he breaks down as number one, they do administrative work, which is the best way to think about that. Just the little things add up. So it's just taking care of those things that need to be taken care of. You've all probably seen by now the Navy officer who did the um, the graduation speech, where he make your bed, and said, if you start every day out making your bed, it, you're going to have a more successful day because you've at least started your day out with a sense of accomplishment. Um, and then he talks about, you know, planning as part of that administrative work is just plan your day so you aren't rushed later on. Um, and it's do it the first thing in the morning. So just kind of set a, a, a agenda up for your day. Second thing is developmental tasks just preparing for the future. And as an athlete, that could be a meeting with a trainer, a position coach, whatever the case would be. And I was thinking about this brand and in, in business, it could be just, you think of some developmental tests from a business standpoint is that could just be strategy session, you know, sitting down and, and talking to a colleague about what you're, you all are wanting to grow uh, as a company with, you know, something like that. It could be, but I mean, it, again, it's just, um, it's kind of like with uh, Jocko willing, right? With the, um, you know, discipline equals freedom. And so yeah. I think, you know, that's kind of what um, Dr. McCabe is saying there is just say, you know, have a routine, have 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 the things that you can just kind of check off that you yep. need to get done every day. And yeah. um, I mean, for sure, that's what, you know, highly successful people do. Yeah. So the number three was training. It's just staying sharp. And, um, you know, that's preparing the whole person to succeed, both the mind and the body. And we've definitely talked about this on this show is, you know, it's really that strength improvement. And one of the things he talked about is there's those those people who use yesterday's results to, to determine today's preparation plan. They always live in a cycle of failure. 
And so when the mindset is locked into responding to consistent weakness or failures, that becomes the goal. And every day we live with failure and frustration, but we also live with success and growth. And I love what he says here. He said, if we focus just on fixing failures, we're, we'll only see failure as important. So training must be bigger than that. So that was a really cool thing about training. And then the last two were execution, um, which of course, as you can imagine, is like you said, you know, having a plan every day, working on those developmental tasks, training, but then like Dr. Mo likes to talk about, you got to go out there and execute at some point Set Kate knowledge plus action equals everything. And then the last thing, and this will wrap this whole thing up, but is, um, the importance of re- review and reflection. What we just talked about there was, um, you know, he said, when you're reviewing and reflecting on your day, you're usually going to find it that falls into one of five categories. If you didn't get the results you were looking for, then it could be bad preparation. It might be bad strategy, could be bad execution. You just didn't execute the way you wanted to could be a lack of mental focus, and it also could be uh, just bad fortune. You know, and again, that goes back to Dr. Mo talking about good swing, bad results is it just may be just bad luck, right? I mean, it's just one of those things that happen. Um, really good stuff there from Dr. McCabe. Absolutely. And it, it reminded me of uh, Todd Setner put a thing out on, Inst- uh, in, I think it was on Instagram. It was one of his social media platforms. The other day, Setner Consulting Group, uh, for those of you um, who don't follow Todd, follow him. He usually has some good content. And he was saying, you know, these people who are like, oh, I've had such a bad day. And he's like challenging them to, and he said, was it really a bad day or did you just have a bad 10 or 15 minutes where you lost maybe focus, the, the, the focus that you wanted to have on the day? And it just ended up being a bad result or a bad uh, outcome in that 10 or 15 minutes. But that 10 or 15 minutes didn't dictate the whole day. Well, it certainly shouldn't. Right. But um, I mean, some people, some people let it. So, I mean, it's it's unfortunate. But again, there's that's where the mental toughness piece comes in. Right. Is is that you go ahead, you assess and um, and you move on, uh, but you don't let things like that you know, completely sidetrack your day and, and get you off, uh, off the path. I see what you did there. You wrapped the whole thing back around to where we started with the whole Dr. Dana Charbonneau and the, the mental toughness thing. That was, that's a pro. See. That's a, that's a 26. Hey, you would have never sweet. done that's, that. In no, the no, first that's, not, that's not episode one stuff no. right there, son. That's, <laughs> that's episode 26 coming at you. <laughs> they don't call him the best, uh, play by or color guy in the business for nothing folks yeah awesome Uh, well listen man i uh, appreciate you um and we will definitely talk more later this week when we're talking to dr jay stewart um really going to be a good conversation there i think that he's big into that resilience training which that's another thing that we'll have to uh you know unpack from him um, is just this resiliency. That's something we is definitely important in mental performance, but it's something we haven't really dove into that much. So we'll definitely do that with Dr. Jay Stewart on Friday. So have a great rest of the week and we'll talk to you later this week. Want to provide feedback or stay up to date with the show? Visit our Instagram page at Mental Advantage Podcast, or you can send us an email at podcast at mentaladvantage.net. To have John Cullen work with you or your team, please write to him at john.cullen at mentaladvantage.net. Thanks for listening to today's episode.